What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. So first off, if you find these types of videos useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button. So diving right in, today we're going to look at how to open up a Pro Tools session in Studio One Four, or perhaps to be a little bit more clear, how to use AAF export and import workflows in order to open up a Pro Tools session in Studio One. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to hop over to Pro Tools. I've got a very basic session set up over here, just something for demonstration. Um, I've got some levels that I've written over here. If we take a look at some of the volume automation, you can see that I've just added some automation. I've taken a couple of these breaths down just to show what comes across. In addition to that, I also have some pan automation that I've written. We'll have a look to see how that looks when it comes in Studio One as well. Now, before we go any further, I just want to make a little disclaimer uh, with respect to AAFs in general and also a little bug that is happening actually on the Pro Tools side with respect to AAF. So first and foremost, AAF is actually a post-production format and it was never really designed for different DAWs to be able to share information. However, it's kind of a byproduct that if a DAW does support that, that it can be used. Having said that, there are always some little quirks with AAF. It's far from perfect. One thing though that I want to mention right off the bat though is that it uses a time code frame rate. So based on the time code rate that you have for your session, regardless of where you're exporting your AAF from, it's going to use that time code rate in order to be kind of a map in terms of where to put the audio files and where to put the edits, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just make a little mental note that this particular one is in 25 frames. Okay, now the next thing I wanna point out is that I'm using Pro Tools 2018, I believe it is 2018.4 Pro Tools Ultimate. So there happens to be a bug, something that I found out in my testing with respect to any fade files that are created. These don't actually come in as you would expect. So for example, if I was to create this fade and I was to export an AAF from Pro Tools and open it up in Studio One, one thing that you would notice is you would get an audio file that's actually named fade. And this audio file would be based upon the length of the fade. So if it was this long, we would essentially have an audio file that's this long. It would be named fade, but it wouldn't have any information. It would be blank. So just one thing to note that if you're exporting AAF in, I believe it's Pro Tools 12 and 2018.x, it's still happening in 2018.4 in this current version that I'm using as of this video. But from my understanding and speaking to some colleagues, it does not happen in Pro Tools 10 or Pro Tools 11. So if you're using either one of those versions, you can go ahead and you can add your fades and that shouldn't be a problem. But one thing I do want to point out is that I have added an edit over here just to show that these edit boundaries do come over when you use an AAF. So the whole point of AAF is that if you have any edits that you want to retain and you want to finesse those later on down the line, that's what you would want to use. Okay, so enough talk. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this. So in Pro Tools, one thing we need to take into consideration is that this is an audio only format in terms of what carries over. If you have any MIDI instruments or anything like that, you will have to go ahead and make sure that you render those to actual audio tracks and bring them back in your session. In addition, it's not going to bring over things like markers, uh, tempo maps or time signatures, any changes like that. That's something that you would have to actually use a MIDI file for if you wanted that to come over but that's for a different video. So what we need to do is once we have all the tracks selected, we need to go to File, Export, Selected Tracks as new AAF or OMF. Now the format I'm gonna use needs to be AAF, and the main things I wanna focus on over here is the format, bit depth, and the copy options. We have an option to do an embedded AAF, which basically means that everything is contained in one file. And although this is really convenient, there's actually a little caveat to working with embedded AAFs in Studio One. It's something we'll talk about later, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just recommend that you use a WAV file. Your bit depth, let's go ahead and leave this at 24. In terms of our copy options, we can either copy from source media or consolidate from source media. And in addition to that, we have handle size over here, which we can adjust. This is simply how much information exists beyond any of these edit boundaries. 
So for this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna consolidate from source media. Let's go ahead and click OK. It's gonna give a sequence name, we'll click OK. Now I wanna go ahead and I wanna put this somewhere where I'll know where it is. Let's go ahead and create a new folder and we'll say AAF export from Pro Tools. We'll go ahead and create that folder and now I'm gonna click save. Next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna ask me to choose a folder where the converted audio files are gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and call this PTAAF audio files. We'll go ahead and create that in the same subfolder. Go ahead and click open. That's gone ahead and it's done its thing. Now we just need to hop over to Studio One. We need to open up a finder window. We need to navigate to that same spot that we exported our AAF. And this is simply a matter of dragging and dropping. Now you'll see that it's automatically brought a new Studio One song into play. Let's go ahead and if we zoom out a little bit over here, you notice that we have these exact same edit boundaries. Let me go ahead and just change this color. Let's change this to a blue. So I can go ahead and I can pull this and you can see that that's the exact same thing that happened in Pro Tools. And we have these handles which allows us to make our edits. So the edits can be retained. That's a super useful feature. Now, the next thing that I wanna look at over here is with respect to the automation. So let's go ahead now and let's view the automation for all of these tracks. Now you'll notice that any automation that was added, for example, where I added the automation on the section with the breaths over here, that was retained. And in terms of any static levels that came across, if we go ahead here and put all these tracks into read mode and then basically just place our cursor anywhere, you'll notice that the static levels came across for the stereo file as well. Now, one thing to point out about the stereo file is that, and this isn't necessarily Studio One's fault, a lot of programs that export stereo files will actually split them up into discrete mono. So we have a mono left and a mono right. Let's go ahead and hide all of our automation. You can see on our event names over here, if I scroll to here, we have music reference dot left and dot right. So one thing you'll have to do is you'll have to pan these out. And then of course we can use some shortcuts. Like for example, we could add a bus for selected channels. And now this has become music. Now, if you wanted to take this, for example, a step further, we could take these and we could pack them into a folder. And if we click our inspector over here, I could simply come over here, click the music bus, and now we've linked this folder to a bus. So it's kind of visually looks a little bit like uh, it's one stereo file, even though it's not. Okay, so now we essentially have our session. It's in place. One thing to note though, is the pan information did not carry over. AAF is not a perfect format. Some stuff comes across, some stuff doesn't. And this varies from different DAW to DAW, so you need to test this out. Now, before I go ahead and click save, there's one thing that I want to point out really quickly. If, for example, we take a look at this audio event, and I was to go ahead and show in Finder, you'll notice that it is actually referencing the file that was exported to the folder that we created to house the audio files from the AAF. So one thing that I would highly recommend doing is right away, I would go ahead and I would click the save to new folder option. And then we could essentially scroll to a location and we could say PT AAF imported. Now I would go ahead and copy this. We'll create a new folder. And then I would also go ahead and I would give this song name, the exact name as the folder. We'll go ahead and just click paste. So now I've essentially, I'm creating a brand new song from this AAF. Now this is something that I would highly advise doing. Now if we go ahead and we view this show in Finder, you'll notice now that it's referencing the media folder and it's in the new song that we created. So it's created a brand new song from the Pro Tools AAF. Now one last thing that I wanna mention, and I spoke briefly about using embedded AAFs, They'll work and they're a fantastic option, but one thing to note is that if you use an embedded AAF and you drag it into Studio One, Studio One will automatically create a song, it will automatically create a media folder, and it will automatically import the audio files that were inside the embedded AAF. And it's going to do that in whatever folder the embedded AAF is residing in. 
So for the most part, even though embedded AFs are really convenient, I would advise just using uh, a regular AAF and then creating a separate folder for the audio files. And then as soon as you have your session kind of set up and you know that everything came across, just go ahead and use that file save to new folder option. It'll give you a nice clean Studio One song with its own files. And as long as you do that, you'll end up with a nice, neat and tidy song. So really the last step with respect to making this work is if we had a tempo map and any markers in our Pro Tools session, then we would obviously want those to come over too. But that's something that we're going to take a look at in another video. But for now, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, like, share. And as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.